Welcome, welcome everybody to another episode of Banter with the Brothers alongside Garfield Campbell. We have a special guest in the studio filling in for the one and only Carl Kenner who's holding it down in Atlanta is the one and only Georgia Schindler August. What's up, y'all? How y'all doing? The Haitian menace himself. What's going on? Damn. Menace. <laughs> Yo, Dennis sensation. Menace. Sensation. Haitian, Haitian sensation. Haitian sensation. Haitian sensation. Haitian sensation. My friend. My friend. <laughs> Thank you, my friend. My friend. My friend. Right. My my friend. All right. Boy, over here eating kabwee. I'll be eating kalaloo, too. Man. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. You don't know. <laughs> first episode of 2020, first episode of New Decade. So, let's not waste any time. Get straight into it. Everyone's been talking about the new Aaron Hernandez documentary on Netflix. Right. If you haven't seen it yet, go and watch it. It's a three-part documentary. Each episode is about an hour, I want to say. Hour and six minutes. Hour and six minutes, to be precise. To the T, to the T. We ain't, we ain't fucking around. We're being <laughs> precise this year. Yeah, I'm just going to say, I watched the first one. And I got by like 10 minutes to the second one. And then I had to come here. So then, you know what I mean? Oh, so you ain't finished. No. Oh, you were... But it, it don't matter to me now because I'm here now. Feel me? All right. right. So you got to talk about it. Shindler, you I got shit it? to do, man. I haven't seen it yet. I was planning to see it probably tonight or tomorrow because I've just been getting a lot of news on it. People have been talking about it a lot, especially right. on Twitter and like the whole world because it's going crazy. So I got yeah, to gotta gotta see, see it. it. Yeah. Dangerous place, Twitter. <laughs> That's a fact. But yeah. Uh, so I've seen it. Yes. All three episodes. Right, right, right. Initial thoughts were first of all, it jumps all over the place. Like it's hard to follow at times. Like, okay, why are we jumping from one event in 2010 to like 2004, back and forth? Like, not specific years, but just like we're jumping around a lot. Yeah, it, it wasn't it wasn't typical style of telling someone's story. You know, I guess they told us from where we knew him first. So, uh, <coughs> I guess Let's on the grand thing. scale of things, most people knew him. From playing football in mm-hmm. college, and then you know yeah. him going. That was where I was first exposed to Aaron yeah. Hernandez. I knew about Aaron Hernandez probably before a lot of people in America, right. who are now watching his documentary. Right, right, right. Because right. he played at the University of Florida when I was still in high school in the state of Florida. They were the best team in the country, obviously. Florida man, Florida man. Don't do that. Yeah, that's you. Yeah, that's that's you. <laughs> but yeah, um, go Gators. <laughs> but I don't, I don't, I don't like. Yeah. I remember, I remember that team at Florida, <clears throat> and it had like a lot of, a lot of players who now have come out and had a lot of different issues. Like you had him, you had Riley Cooper who got caught calling somebody a nigger on camera. Well, uh, you had Tim Tebow who was like the, the pastor. pastor. The pastor. Uh, you yeah, had that team was crazy. Bro. Team was crazy as fuck. You had Percy Harvin who was dealing with a lot of like anxiety himself. Right. And he's gone on record and talked about it after. It was it was a lot of things going on in Florida at that time. Yeah, but T Tebow was I think he had a better college career than an NFL career. <laughs> oh, was, without a was, doubt, without a he doubt, was, he was killing it. So, <laughs> pardon, Jimmy. Yeah, keep talking. Uh, <laughs> I just gotta get my my chapstick. Oh my days. Anyway, but yeah. So one thing that they they go on with this Hernandez doc is like cold outside. a lot of <laughs> a lot of is the. That uh, no, nah, nah, Carmex nah. is the way, bro. Same bliss text dog. <laughs> <laughs> one of the one of the things that Hernandez, the in the doc they go on about is like his behavior was caused because he was closetedly gay, or in the closet. I don't yeah. know if that's the proper term. I'm sorry if I offended anybody. Uh, maybe, maybe could have hurt his pride a little bit. Maybe you know what I mean? Because a lot a lot of the times you know you playing football. Listen. You're you're in a you're in that state where like you know you're you're on top, especially with the Patriots being on top. You know what I mean? So you don't want anything affecting or that. coming out like you know that you don't want out, especially at a time you know. Especially I know how big franchises go too. They're like, all right, everybody fix your shit. Don't you know? Especially the Patriots. Yeah, don't, they're known for keeping things yeah, hush hush. I mean, don't. look at look at AB, bro. He had his bullshit. Now you, and it just. <laughs> you know what I mean, so they 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 told him you know. They took an executive decision to just... Get rid of him. Yeah, get rid of him, so... Yeah, I mean, I think that there were a lot of issues. Jevy, spoiler alert. No, listen, but, like, <clears throat> as I, I... I could see a lot of things from the jump that I'm like, yo, it's kind of shaky here. First of all, I saw that his dad passed away, and he was, like, someone he'd, like... And the only per- person looked like he feared or, like, yeah, had authority over him. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. someone he could listen to, and he it seemed like everybody else 
was just like afraid of him. I wouldn't say like or like his mom, for example. I think that's only she had person. different priorities. Yeah, like she wasn't like I don't think she was scared of him. You know what I'm saying? I felt like yeah. everybody else was though. You know what I'm saying? Yes and no. From what I yeah. from what I see so far. Yes yeah. and no. In the documentary, they definitely do a good job of painting him out to be like at first. He was this real good kid from like a quaint Connecticut town, which was Bristol. Right. I've been to Bristol. With all due respect to all people from Bristol, I wouldn't necessarily call it a quaint Connecticut town. It ain't it, Chief. It's not like it's not like it's a bad place. It ain't it, Chief. Like obviously right. everywhere has its good and its bad parts. Right. True, true. But they tried to make like there was so like growing up, I remember hearing about him and I've also met people through friends who have played football at the University of Florida. They didn't cross paths directly, but I've I've actually had like personal conversations with people who did play with him. Right. And in those conversations, they did say, you know, like no one ever really spoke about the sexuality thing. So when this documentary came out, like I had heard rumors of it throughout like just different media, right. but people who knew him directly, who I had spoken to, never mentioned it. But they did mention like we didn't we knew not to fuck with him. Right. Like that was one thing that was consistently said. Like, mm-hmm. you know, they said, "Oh, we, we you know, we kind of thought he came from like a rough upbringing. He can't. He was kind of like, where I like kind of. I don't want to say gang tied, but like people. You know, when somebody like they got an affiliation right, with right, people right, that right. you don't want to cross. Yeah, right, 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 right. So that would be more of what I had heard about him. So when when the documentary started off, rip like everyone thinks Hernandez is some hard thug from Connecticut. He's from a quaint town. I was like, ah. Uh, yeah. I mean, he had a lot of people fooled that that's the case. Right. Because these are, I mean, I'm talking like a lot of firsthand sources. But I don't know. That that part was interesting to me. Uh, also, I felt like the documentary spent a lot of time saying his actions were based on his sexuality. Meanwhile, at the end, they talk about his brain and CTE being like one of the worst cases that they had ever seen in somebody who's 27 years old. So it's like, hold up. If he has one of the worst cases of CTE, why did you spend so little time talking about this? Because we've seen what CTE has done to other people. Yeah. Like Junior Seau shot himself in the chest so that way they could study his brain because CTE was so bad with him. Mm-hmm. Plenty of other people have, have killed themselves with, you know, like suffering from CTE. So if this is such a hot button issue, why is Netflix so afraid to touch it? You know what I'm saying? Uh, it, might, it might be the NFL too, man. That's what I think. I it think yeah, yeah. That that's what I'm about to say. First of all, I'm not really too coining these uh medical terms. What does CTE stand for? Uh it I don't know the exact definition of it, but it's basically Producer. repeated <laughs> Producer. <laughs> it's like repeated head trauma. Come on, hurry up. <laughs> <laughs> It's basically like it's it's an injury caused from the repeated head trauma. Definition, definition, read it. Read chronic, it. Traumatic, chronic traumatic encephalopathy. Encephalopathy. It's um a degenerative disease caused by repeated head injuries. Yes. So it basically causes the brain to decay a lot faster. All right. So, so they say he was like twenty seven, but basically his brain was like somebody who was like seventy. Right. It's crazy. So, with that being said. I could see why they were trying to stay away from that. The the NFL is clearly in the documentary. You see people representing the NFL in the Plenty documentary. True, yeah. true. You remember the movie uh, Concussion, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Touch What's on similar name? topics and discussions. These people are not trying to tell people that football, football is safe, like, yeah. like, bro, there's a reason why. <laughs> there's millions of reasons why it's only played in this country, but like. That's one of the reasons, bro. Like, for it's, sure, it's too yeah. dangerous, and your brain should not be going through that much trauma. And like, it's just too much. But what what I saw from the documentary, right? I think there's a lot of, to me, seemed like a person that was just keeping everything built up, you know, especially since he um he uh he lost his father. And I remember him saying on the phone to his mom, he said. Um, I'm paraphrasing. He said, um, <coughs> yeah, you, you had different things to worry about. You know, I went to college. I just lost my father. Da, 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 this, that, and the fourth, you know? And she she really just, like, brushed it off, you know? Like, it was nothing. 
which I which I which I find interesting because you know how college get. It's tough, First especially of all, for him. He went he, a thousand miles from home. He he from Connecticut, Bristol, Connecticut, right? And he goes all the way to Florida to play football. Yeah. Like you, one of man, the biggest programs in the you, country. Man, if you play football, uh, 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 trust me, for, I, yeah, I can attest to you, that. You like, the man, you, like if you are on that campus and you are a football player, people know you. You the man, yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? You getting it done? All that attention, all the 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 fame, all everything. You're just and you're dealing with personal issues. You know, you're probably doing a lot of things to help, like you know, cope, cope with it in depression, whatever you're going through. But I, yeah, I don't like how it was just everything I said was majority about his sexuality. Like, bro, I it is what it is. Like for him, you know what I'm saying, but like, focus on the real issue at hand. He was sick. Like he was a sick dude. Like yeah. Like bro, he jokingly said to his lawyer, "Man, the lawyer said to him, yeah, man, I was out here trying to get some deals for you.'" But Nike, he's finding it hard to put Nike on an a, a, a orange jumpsuit. Yeah. He said, get me a Smith & Wesson deal. He was out here busting shots. Bro, Wait until you get further along. The no, amount of people he really starts, like... Like, you're not sick you gotta be to, like, say some shit like that? When you are Knowingly in know what you for did? For a murder trial. And, for murder, I'm sorry. Bro. Facing a murder trial. Hey, listen. He's, there's, listen. A, there's a couple things... This is why I know he was feared, right? Amongst people that knew him. His fiance, for example. Now, if you didn't watch it, I don't really care. You know, I'm not going to spoil anything for you, but whatever. I will, don't worry. <laughs> the fiance said, <coughs> when, when you go to testify, right? Hey, listen. In my, if, in my life, if I could find a fiance as loyal as his, or... Anybody as low as his cousin, bro. Public service announcement. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, I just hope people that I I, I um I get along with yeah. are that loyal. And I and I don't know it. I just hope. She really bro. went to court and testified against her sister's or for her fiance who killed her sister's boyfriend. Boyfriend. She said She got on a stand she, and she knowingly said, lied. She said, um, they said to her the, the <laughs> I guess the the, the lawyer questioner said to her so, are you and your sister close? Mind you, you know, they're very close. Um, she stood there. She thought about it. She said, mm, close. Estranged. I'm like, yo, this girl is sick. But she a writer, fam. She was. I, hey, listen, I want her in my car, fam. <laughs> I'm talk. So, a couple of things you talked about that I want to touch on. So, first of all, later on they talk about how, or the high school friend talks about how, uh, I put that in quotations because... I'm still skeptical of that whole relationship. Right. So, <clears throat> the high school friend says, oh, when he went to Florida at first, he comes back, he puts on 10, 15 pounds of muscle, which obviously, he's a college athlete. He's going to put on more muscle. Yeah. He's also getting older. Right. He's, he's growing into his body. Like, that shit happens. True. So, he's like, he starts getting all these tattoos, blah, blah, blah. He's at Florida. He's around these, you know, different people or whatever. And my thing is, is like you said, when you're at Florida, like, people know you. Yeah. Like, for example, a good friend of mine, shout out Ace Train, that's my dog, went to Florida, right. played football there. We grew up in the same neighborhood, a very humble person. Yeah. He went to Florida, was and like, through all, throughout all them years while he was at Florida, he never changed the person he was. Right. It wasn't until he graduated and we went back to Florida, Florida State, like, weekend, that I realized how big on campus he was. Right. And that shit was shocking to me, because I was like, that's crazy, like... Yeah, it's, it's my, it's my yeah, it's my boy. Yeah. He ain't changed though. That's right. That, that was yeah, like yeah, yeah. that made it even doper to me because I was like, I respect you. Like I already had, you know, if if I fuck with you like that, I already got a high, high, high level of respect for you. Yeah. But now my level of respect for you just went through the roof, right? Because like you, you didn't change. People coming up, oh my god, can I take a selfie with you? Oh my god, bro. I'm like, damn, that's crazy. But like, I'm happy for him. I'm like, it's my boy. But if you are a different type of person, I can easily see how that life. Could influence, yeah, influence you. Yeah, could change you. I mean, coming from coming from Bristol, Connecticut, like exactly. I mean, who who knows anything about the state or and or the the town? So yeah, you know, you going to big Florida, it's like and you going a thousand miles away from home. So as somebody who did the reverse of that, I went from Florida to Connecticut. Mm -hmm. When you're a thousand miles away from home, 
your whole world changes. And like for y'all, you grew up like you is a different story because right. you spent half your time in in Jamaica. You came here in high school. Right. Similarly, you were born in Connecticut, right? Yeah. Born in Connecticut, raised in Connecticut, mm-hmm. and all of a sudden you get thrown into a whole new culture. Like for me, born in Florida, raised in Florida, getting thrown into Connecticut culture, I was like, "Hold up, these motherfuckers is different." Yeah, different. yeah. You can't call people jet, jet up here, boy. <laughs> yeah, like I'm, I'm saying all the terms I grew up saying. And motherfuckers <laughs> looking at me like, Weird. "What the fuck you what talking about?" Left. Yeah, yeah. What's going on, fuck nigga. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so like, <laughs> so you automatically gotta like. Come you out, got, you, you, gotta got, you have to like, yeah, you, you have adjust. to adjust. That's yeah, a yeah, huge yeah. adjustment. So I can only imagine for him, not only like, I was a student athlete here at Sacred Heart. Like, Sacred Heart is a Division One program. Like, any Division One level of an athlete, you will get a certain amount of respect wherever you go. Right. Sure. There's different levels of mat, like of the attention that you get though. Mm-hmm. Right. So for example, we don't get anywhere yeah, fucking yeah. here. Yeah, we the level of attention. Juice. We ain't had that juice. Yeah. We, yeah. Had, we had, had juice. juice. We ain't had that juice. Though. Yeah. Right. That's supercharged. Nigga had some some Kool Aid. <laughs> <laughs> you motherfuckers had a, the had, minute made plan. Yeah. <laughs> Facts. We had to sell some water. So, yeah, exactly. We had to sell some water. It's, it's a different level. So you can easily, I can easily put myself in the shoes of somebody else. And see to myself, okay, I could see how you would get carried away with this. Because yeah, yeah. there are times, even when I first got up here, that I was like, hold on. I had to check myself, like, hold on, homie. You you getting too big for your own shoes. Right. Because I'm away from home. Like, I'm like, hold up. They don't know who I am. Like, true, shit. True. <laughs> oh, shit. All right. Y'all, y'all know who I am, man. You could paint, you could paint a different you could picture. Paint a, exactly. You, know you could paint whatever yeah, picture yourself that exactly, you want to paint. Exactly. And it, ain't nobody, like, it was me and one other person from my entire city mm-hmm. that came to school here. Mm-hmm. And he left after the first semester. Wow. So it was just me. I, I was about, to, I was about to say, I ain't know nobody else from Tampa, bro. <laughs> no, but he left, after, he left after the yeah, first semester. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That shit was crazy. But like, me and him, at first, we were talking, we were cool with each other. Oh my God, what's up, bro? Like, shit, we were just so happy to see somebody else. So, yeah, yeah. Like, when you are put out of your comfort zone, you're forced to adjust and, and grow. Right. And in that era at Florida, the Urban Meyer era, it was like a very loose time in terms of rules that were placed on I think the athletes. I'm sure obviously on the inside it was a little bit different but in terms of like athletes would fail drug tests and then instead of like really getting like instead of becoming public knowledge you might have an injury that week right. and you sit out. Right. They You know they kept it in house. I don't know mm-hmm. the ins and outs of what was, what was done in house. That's something only obviously if you have been on a team, you understand that there's yeah. different levels of it outside versus internally. Academically, but too. if you are a student athlete at, say, Stanford, and you fail a drug test, that becomes public knowledge. Mm-hmm. People change how you know it uh, changes the perception of yeah, it. True. Yeah. Whereas at like at Florida, especially at that time, I don't know how it was in other times because like when I had friends who went there, right. it was a different coach, a right. different time. Right. But like her, he he was out of his element. He was allowed to get away with things. And one thing that the friend did say was, you know, the more you get away with, the more untouchable you feel. Yeah, that's a and fact. that's a fact. True. Your ego just get bigger. You know? Exactly. Stop going talking in, uh, you true. know. So it's rumored third that he first, shot somebody first to third. Yeah. in a drive-by in Gainesville and they got covered up. Which is not, like, that outrageous of a story for me to believe in. Right. But again, this is all speculation. Yeah. Right. And that's part of my issue with the documentary. Right. This is built on a lot of speculation. Right. On somebody who's not here to refute any of these claims. Just like the Michael Jackson one. Which is what, exactly what I was yeah. going to say. Right? And that's that's part of my issue with some of these documentaries. Is like, I have no issue with you telling these stories. Especially about people who do things that are like are as bad as what like Hernandez did. Or what they allege Michael Jackson did. Mm-hmm. Right. I just don't like when it's done. When the person is not allowed to defend themselves. True. Right. That's my biggest issue. Yeah. Right. So immediately going into the doc, that was that was my first thought. Like, ah, I don't know how I'm gonna feel about this because I mean, he's not here to pu- defend the it. public. The public just eat away at especially at those types of situations, and especially like when on the other side. I mean, you have people can be their own journalists now, anyways, with the sources of the internet. I mean, you don't exactly. really need like you know to go ahead and talk to you know certain people stuff like that. If somebody wants to make a documentary project on whatever you know you can just be your own source really yeah you know have a couple people if you get yeah. interviews or whatever you know to go ahead sit down and, and you know talk about whatever the issue is is going on but like people really don't go 
inside in depth, like really. Yeah, they don't about some things. So and it's dangerous because it's you have a power. He is now dead. This documentary. He has a young daughter. She's gonna grow up one day and probably watch this mm. and see a legacy of her father painted that may or may not be true. Man. She will never know. Shit, I'll tell you something. That mom gonna make sure it ain't nothing bad going she's yeah, gonna be in her head. That's... But at some point she's gonna be grown enough and she's gonna be asking questions, obviously. But as I, I have a similar issue that you have. It's like alright, cool. Whatever he did, whatever is a fact is a fact. But when you're making something like this, it should all be facts. Or majority be facts. It can't be yeah. majority assumptions or accusations or shit it's like that. It's too much he said, she said. Yeah, no, you got to come with some concrete, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Facts. Like, nobody built their they, 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 they foundation on yeah. sand, bro. Dude, you can't go nowhere with that. That's concrete facts. evidence, and then you could really have something, you know, to hold together. But, like, I don't know, man. From what I saw, it was very interesting, though. I just found... Go finish it. You got to finish it. Yeah, I, yeah. I just Watch found, I just found the, mother, the mother so interesting. Like, like I... I can't look, bro. I just can't wrap my head around how <clears throat> she was sleeping with her niece's husband after her f- husband passed away. Husband passed away. It's certain people though. That's just, but think about how many like all right. For example, how many people you've met in your lifetime? Like all right, I'm gonna use women in this example because we're talking about the mother. How many women you have met mm-hmm. who you are like, yeah, you be doing some slimy shit to people. Right, and but, that and and she, whoever that person may be, may go on to be somebody's mother one day. Right, mm-hmm. like what do they say? A leopard don't change his spots. Yeah, yeah. something like that. Something like that. I don't know. I don't yeah, know how it goes, but you get to just what I'm yeah, saying. Yeah, 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 I got you. I feel like his mother was one of them people. Right, she was always doing people like that. But now, obviously, when you have a superstar son, your behavior gets brought into the limelight. Right, it, it it's just it's just. It's just crazy because, yeah, bro, the the mother to me was, as you said, she might have been one of those people, but your niece is dying from cancer, right? You know how fucked up you, and your, your son is about to go, like, like, he's about to be locked up for a long time. But this was before, they start, they got together before he, that happened. Yeah, but like. Like long before. Yeah, that. but like, how. Yeah, that's that's that, that's what I that's why I realized after he was saying like yo my father died and then just and that dude was like yo imagine you waking up and you see some other dude in your house making bacon I'm like yo first wait, of all yo that <laughs> quote was funny because he was like he was like you wake up and another dude is in your house <clears throat> and he was like he's cooking eggs in your house <laughs> I was like is he good <laughs> bro you gotta watch this bro you just gotta I watch was this. like yo wait. It. So this shit been going on. Yeah, for a but, good minute. But like that's still but, crazy, bro. But you know what? We also can't make we gotta make sure that we don't put all the blame only on the mother. Cause the cousin's husband was just as fucked up. Yeah. Nah, he's that. a dickhead. Yeah, no doubt. His his girlfriend was dying of cancer. Yeah, bro. That nigga is crazy. And peaced out for her auntie. Listen, I least, least, say, yo, this, least, this, least, say, yo, this pump don't work no more. I want new pastures, bro. <laughs> ain't, ain't that's ain't really right. how he moved though. But like when that's you look crazy. when I seen dude in the in the documentary, I was like yeah, you look like the type that'll do some shit like that. Yeah. <laughs> and and like, he said like, he did yeah. it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like, like well, yeah, look at that. Yeah, like, yeah, 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 I did that. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it's just like that. That part really had me like interested because like it shows that he came from a real interesting dynamic. He also you they'll get into the the double homicide. After when he was in Boston, I saw that. Yeah, they were they they it's like the first I want to say like fifty minutes there, and then they were talking about the double homicide when he killed the Cur- Cape Verdean dudes, right? Yeah, I'm like, yeah, who killed Cape Verdean? Them dudes are like mad cool all the time. Nice. But anyway, I was like, damn. And the fact that they found a car in the cousin's house. This is what I'm if telling you, you, bro. Spoiler alert. Listen, the fact that that man. You want me to spoil this part for you? Yeah, go ahead. I don't care. Here's the public knowledge. The ahead. fact that he gets off of that shit is the craziest part to me. They found the murder weapon. They found, I mean, not the murder weapon, the murder vehicle in the house of his sis, of his cousin. Right. And he got he gets off. It, that shit was crazy. No, what I'm saying, like, is there any proof dude, that he's in a car? No. There was proof that he was in a car. In a car? Yes. They got a gun? They could, the problem is, is they couldn't figure out who was in, who did it. 
But this was also a crazy part to me because the, his boy who was with him that night, he shoots his boy later on in Miami in the face. And his boy lives to tell the tale. Yeah. Go ahead. But listen, um, the guy is also not credible. He's not credible because he's a criminal. Not just that, but he said that he shot him in the car, but there's blood stains on the parking lot. Well, that's because he was dripping out of his face. True, but he could have also fallen. He didn't talk about that it was a drug deal that was happening. Partially, <laughs> but it's also like the shell casings. Like, all right. The crazy part was because he was already convicted of murder when he went on trial for the double murder. Then he shoots the only person who was with him that night in the face. They in the car. He falls asleep. He wakes up to Hernandez like this. God damn. Boom. How are you not going to believe that he did that? The thing is, is how he gets off of it is because in court, the two of them are just pointing fingers. You shot him. No, you shot him. No, you shot him. No, you shot him. Yeah, everybody confused. But it's like, hold on. Yeah, they the, can't, they why, can't. Would, why would if... All right, let's... Hypothetically speaking, because neither of us don't be out here catching nobody. It's like, Hell no. Don't be kicking out my door thinking this shit. Let's no say cheese. me and you riding out one night. <laughs> we riding. Somebody... Gets in, we get into it with somebody. One of the two of us shoots somebody in a drive-by. And we kill two people and injure a third. Mm. Now, let's Everybody say... Everybody got died, bro. Let's say, let's say I shot the person, <laughs> no right? No witnesses. <laughs> <laughs> let's, say, let's, say I shot the, let's say I shot the person, right? Mm. Why would I put the murder... Like the vehicle that we committed said crime... In, why would you let me put that murder vehicle in your family member's house? That's crazy. Why would you indict another member of your family on some shit that you were already pissed at me like, bro, you were tripping. Like, why the fuck are you shooting him? Why would you let me store it at your family's house? Well, first of all... What motive would, would any sane person have? But that's the thing. He's not sane. So he probably was thinking like, yo, fuck it. I'm going to just park the car here. Ain't nobody going to find out. He would have got away with it if they just took the car out. He'd have been completely scot-free of that crime if they just took the car out. Years that car was sitting in that That's garage. crazy. But that's what I'm saying. Like, it just doesn't make sense. Like, why would it? Nobody, nobody in their right mind would would be in a be an accomplice to a crime and then be like, you know what, bro, I got you. Like, I mean, maybe to an extent, but you're not gonna put the whole vehicle that you murdered two people in, in not even in your house. Like, it's not like you put it in your crib. You put it in your family member's crib. <laughs> the the house you're spending the majority of your time at. Because exactly. You, your your yeah. your mother not getting along. Yeah. So now you're now you're. You're indicting somebody else in this crime. Would you put some an innocent member of your family in any of that type of danger? Of course. Hell of course no. Not. no. Exactly. But no, but that, then again, they talk talk about the cousin being like confidant to him, you know, like tell her everything and whatever. So she probably like, yo, listen, anything you do, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. It could have that. been like, you know, she, she looked like she was, what? Well, she looked like she was and was willing to die, even if, though she was dying for it. You know what I'm saying? And she did, yeah. yeah. She, she rode from all the way. Yeah, so... I mean, it's crazy. I'm, I'm not going to say too much more on it. Yeah. Y'all just got to go back and finish it. Next episode, it. we will come back and we'll, we'll have a full yeah. discussion on it after you finished it.